I Am The City was one of our final six songs recorded in 1982, before they would go their separate ways for 35 years. The song was never released at the time and rediscovered in 1993. In today's video, we are going to explore the song, the music and content, and the history surrounding it. And I can't wait to finally talk about one of my favorite songs of our steep cuts, I Am The City. Hey, so, from ABBA's many outtakes, I Am The City is one of the very few ones that ABBA would release in their entirety. In this series of videos, we talked about two other songs before, Just A Notion and Put On Your White Sombrero. And now, we've reached the end of ABBA's first 10 years. In May 1982, ABBA recorded three songs that were intended for their bland ninth album. The songs were You Owe Me One, Just Like That, and I Am The City. This plan for ABBA's ninth album was serious and real. They even had an official catalog number for the album Polar Poles 352. The initial intention was in fact to create a double album. One record should have new studio material and a second record should consist of live recordings from five or six live concerts at an unspecified venue somewhere in Europe. They already had similar plans in 1977 for ABBA the Album and they also intended to release a live album following their Wembley concerts in 1979, but they never seemed to be convinced of it. By 1982, I think it's remarkable how ambitious their plan was for this ninth album. In the end, they wouldn't even come close to creating an album in and of itself, and most of these first recordings were locked away in the archives. So to understand the history and fate, we also have to take a look at where ABBA was at that time. The new album from ABBA is The Visitors. When their most recent album, The Visitors, was released in November 1981, the group effort and energy that was ABBA was starting to fade away. It was indicative that there was barely any promotion for the album. That is even more devastating considering the qualities of The Visitors. The music, lyrics, the complexity of ABBA's work was sophisticated and profound. For many of their fans, especially in hindsight, ABBA was at the peak of their artistry, but at an all-time low, privately. By 1982, they would even have sort of a break for several months. Agneta and Frida had new relationships, Björn and Benny were married with new women. Furthermore, both became fathers again within just a week of each other, so they took time off at the start of the year. Agneta enjoyed private life as well and Frida decided to record her first solo album in English, Something's Going On, between February and March 1982. The only activities for ABBA during this period were an interview for Spanish TV filmed in February in Stockholm and a few greetings for the Kenny Everett television show on UK TV. What is this show we're watching? It's the Kenny Everett television show. Are we on it? No. Thank, Thank God. God. <laughs> Early that year, in January 1982, ABBA also filmed the music video for Head Over Heels, and those were all their activities for the first half of that year. The song was released as a single in March and only reached number 25 in the UK. It was the end of ABBA's six-year run of having top 10 hits in the UK. Despite their fading activities and apparent lack of interest, it was confirmed several times by the members and their management that ABBA would continue. In October 1981, Jörel Hansa wrote, we look forward to many more years with ABBA. In December, she confirmed, these different activities will not affect ABBA as a group. They will stay together and continue their successful work. And so came May 1982 and that fateful recording session for the intended new ABBA album. I Am The City was the third and final song to be recorded. And in my opinion, it is another artistic climax in these later years of ABBA's legacy. The backing track was recorded in two days. It has Benny on keyboards and synthesizers, Rutger Gunnarsson on bass, Per Lindvall on drums and Lasse Velander on guitars. For these sessions, Benny did not use his Yamaha GX1 for a change, but a new synthesizer, the Brofet 10, 
as well as a Yamaha GS1. Eleven days later, they recorded vocals and on the 2nd of June, the song was mixed. In my opinion, I Am The City is a prime example in ABBA's catalogue where Benny's music and Björn's lyrics are blending as perfect as possible. Where Agneta and Frida's vocal work is a captivating match with the music and lyrics handled terrifically by Björn and Benny, producing one of the most intricate and mesmerizing vocal arrangements. The song is described as an homage to big city life, similar to ABBA's Summer Night City. Fittingly, the sound and production is modern, up-tempo and energetic. The backing track is relentless, it goes on and on and never really stops, as if to symbolize the speed and turmoil of the city. Many synthesizer riffs and the distorted guitars are constantly bridging gaps and parts of the song. We also have alarming synthesizers sounding like sirens going through the city and a superb jiggy bass. All is scarce, narrow, tight and cut short. The melodies are these long and winding phrases, again, never really ending. The working title of the song was Harry or Hurry, which is so fitting since it literally captures the feeling of hurrying with its fast-driven tempo and beat. Listening closely, the song has such a complex pattern of rhythms. It seems to be a blend of synthesized rhythm sections in the form of a cold and steady beat, abruptly changing and sometimes increasing in tempo, mixed with warmer sounding beats and real drums. The same complexity can be found in the way Agneta and Frida's vocals are arranged. They take turns in singing the lead, which didn't happen too often, and they also have lines together in harmony in unison. Their vocals sometimes go back and forth in the mix, and their voices are once again extremely high and sharp. To an ultimate peak, really reminding me of another abandoned song we discussed, Put on your white sombrero. During the verses, we even get a variation of Abba's classic replying vocals, maybe done by Björn and Benny. With all of my personal perception of a complexity on so many levels, the amazing thing is that, in my opinion, all of this is done so delicately, almost in an easy-going way of putting it together. It never sounds too much, too on the nose, it's always perfectly balanced from start to finish in a slick production and mix. Now, we know in Abba's case, it's always the music that comes first, then lyrics. That's certainly also the case in I Am The City, but music and lyrics are so incredibly interwoven on this song that you almost couldn't tell what was first. Björn's lyrics, as I pointed out, literally reflect the music in many lines, but it could as well be the music which reflects Björn's lyrics. The air is vibrant and electrified. That really describes the music and pace of the song. Somewhere in the middle of the never-ending noise there is a constant steady rhythm of a heart that beats. As we have seen, the song itself is this never-ending flow of rhythm and sounds and Björn puts that into lyrics. He's describing the city life, but at the same time the music reflects city life. So in a way, Björn really describes the actual music and production. And most intriguingly, he writes about a million voices that blend into a single voice. That's exactly what they are doing with Agneta and Frida. Well, maybe not literally a million voices, but we have this marvelous melange of voices, high and low, front and back, overlapping and crossing each other and coming together at the same time. A million voices blend into a single voice. This brings us to the ultimate climax of the song itself, the final chorus. Or is it a final verse? A repetition of the first verse, maybe? They are doing this incredible mashup by combining pieces of the first verse from the beginning and parts of the chorus. I am the city. The famous 
I had a wonderful comment from one of our friends here on YouTube regarding this song. He wrote, The production of the vocals is absolutely incredible. So many layers and effects and counterpoints going on. Real magic in the studio and endless work to produce all those vocal tricks that sound like the traffic and hum and buzz of city streets. And a huge change of direction after all of the other songs they had done in that part of their career, which feature only one definite lead vocal and singer. Suddenly, they were back to the name of the game, shared leads territory, but with a hundred other harmony parts going on. Magic. When it comes to the impeccable arrangement of vocal layers, you can also find that on songs like Lovers Live a Little Longer and even closer to 1982, You Owe Me One. Again, like I Am The City, upbeat and energetic and bringing Agneta and Frida together in unison throughout the entire track for the first time in two years in a complex vocal arrangement. So the songs of this period are really heading forward with new sounds and experiments, yet at the same time hearkening back to trademarks of ABBA's earlier recordings. In fact, the first seven notes in the verse for I Am The City were recycled from one of Björn and Benny's very first compositions ever, Inga Theme from 1970. You will recognize the melody during the organ intro on that song. That whole track has a haunting mood of psychedelic vibes, which was somehow captured again in 1982 on I Am The City in a completely new way. And yet, with all this ambition and, I would think, promising new sounds, Björn and Benny felt that there was something seriously off. The plan for that ninth album was put on ice. In the meantime, they created a Greatest Hits double album with all of ABBA's classic singles and a couple of brand new songs. So there was another break. They wanted to take their time to write and record those new songs. In August 1982, they returned to the recording studio to record their final material for 35 years. Under Attack, Cassandra and The Day Before You Came. The tracks from May were still supposed to be held over for a new album, now intended to be released in 1983. In a press release from June 1982, Jural wrote, two new LP tracks are finished, just like that and I Am The City. ABBA will be back in the studio in August to record three or four new songs. Our intention is to release a new single shortly before the release of the bland double LP with all ABBA singles A-sides. There will, as you understand, not be a brand new ABBA LP this year, but there will definitely be such a new LP during 1983. Even if the ABBA members from time to time are doing things on their own, there is no intention whatsoever to break up the group. Eventually, ABBA's Greatest Hits album, The First Ten Years, and their gorgeous promotion campaign in November 1982 turned out to be their final activities for 40 years. So what would now happen to those songs from May? First of all, isn't it ironic that from all three tracks, the only one that was actually released at the time was the song which, in Björn and Benny's estimation, was the weakest one, You Owe Me One. The song was not mentioned in the press release and only released as a b-side to Under Attack. The other two songs, Just Like That and I Am The City, were not immediately released because they seemed to be good enough. They intended to hold them back for their next album in 1983. And because that never happened, the song simply remained unreleased. When Björn and Benny worked on the musical chess, they picked up melody fragments from both songs. The verses of I Am The City were recycled for an early demo version of the song The Arbiter. It didn't make it to the final version, but the song still has the vibes of I Am The City, with its electronic sounds and beat-driven structure. In 1993, Björn and Benny were asked by Polychrome to include an unreleased song on a new compilation album, More Abba Gold. And so, I Am The City became the first release of a new, previously unreleased Abba song, 
in 11 years. At the time, Benny said that the song is a pretty fun recording, but if we'd done it today, maybe we'd deleted one or two bits from it. Listening to it now, although it was made over a decade ago, it actually sounds pretty good. It may not be the world's best song, but it sounds like pop. It has the aura of ABBA. When we discussed the possible concert set list for ABBA's Voyage concert last year, when we had no idea what to expect, I remember many comments from you actually suggesting I Am The City would work well. That's a most unusual choice, for sure, but having seen the show and concept now, just visually, it certainly would be fascinating to experience. And so, we are at the end of exploring this mythical time, ABBA's intriguing final sessions in 1982, and the masterful craft that is I Am The City, in my opinion. Let me know what you think of this song in the comments below. Alright, until then, hey don't!